So as many of you may know, we have been covering the Britney Spears conservatorship situation after that bombshell audio recording dropped from her most recent testimony. She laid out how for over a decade, her own family took advantage of her and kept her trapped, plus denied her the right to even have another child. Unfortunately, now it looks like Jamie Spears is going to stay as the conservator of her estate. I'm gonna get into all those details in just a moment, but first, if you could do us a big favor and please tap that like button, we'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. A judge on Wednesday decided to deny Britney's request to remove her father as the conservator of her estate. The LA Superior Court ruled that Britney's request to suspend her father as the sole conservator of her estate was denied without prejudice. Britney Spears is 39 years old right now and has been under this conservatorship involving her father for over a decade. In her testimony, Britney delivered a powerful 24-minute statement where she clearly outlined what her father had been putting her through. But according to the judge, they could not make a ruling based on what she said because apparently Britney still needs to file a petition to terminate her conservatorship. At this point, it just feels Feels like they keep making more and more excuses. They assign this paperwork, you gotta file this thing. But I digress. According to the court documents, the judge said, The conservator's request to suspend James P. Spears immediately upon the appointment of Besimir Trust Company of California as sole conservator of a state is denied without prejudice. And this new court filing is a big setback for Brittany, and unfortunately, this denial from a judge is nothing really new for her. Samuel Ingham had filed the request to remove Jamie Spears from the conservatorship back in November of 2020. He stated that his client was afraid of her father and would refuse to ever perform again if he continued to be in control of her life and career. Judge Brenda Penny declined to suspend her father from the conservatorship back then, and in addition to not doing anything, she also appointed the financial company of Besimir Trust as a co-conservator. According to reports, this most recent decision was simply intended for the judge to approve Besimir Trust as that co-conservator, but also to actually like reiterate their stance on keeping Jamie Spears in charge of his daughter's life. That being said, I do think that because we all really got to hear her speak, and I mean really speak about what is been going on in this conservatorship, that has to put a lot of pressure on the people controlling her. I mean, Britney even said in that recording how her father loved controlling her life and stated that she believed her conservators, including her own father, should all be in jail. Even adding on to that saying that she intended on suing her family, I mean all of them, as a whole. This conservatorship case has garnered global attention at this point, and with this denial from the judge after what we heard, there is no way people are going to let this go. In the court filings for the denial, the court found Spears to be substantially unable to manage his or her financial resources or to resist fraud or undue influence. I mean, the hypocrisy. You should not be able to make money off of someone in a conservatorship. That's called slavery. Her father has been her conservator since 2008. I was in grade 11 in 2008. My life has changed drastically in that amount of time because I had the freedom to choose my own path in life. Think about all of the different ways your life has gone since 2008. Now imagine that in that same time, Britney Spears was being taken from therapy session to therapy session, given various amounts of pharmaceutical drugs to calm her down, forced her to do shows with no breaks in between, plan her own choreography, write her own songs, perform them again, pay for the equipment, the buses, the plane tickets, burns out and then refuses to work, so they give her lithium, wants to have a baby, they don't let her go to the doctor to get the IUD taken out. I'm sure she's even thought about running away from them at some point, you know, from 2008 to 2021, but her efforts would be futile. She's got no ID, no passport, a phone that's probably under supervision. It just makes you sad, and the worst part was that you know that 24 minute audio is only a blip in the amount of time. There's no way that you can cram 13 years of trauma into 24 minutes. Like someone just needs to get like a podcast with her or something, and it could be 13 seasons long, and every episode would be five hours a piece. I mean, this lady has been through it. And you can hear that in the way that she spoke. She would speed up at points where you know that she was just dying to get all that info out. And so then she would have to like pull back weirdly just so that they can continue writing it down. Now, not to bring the mood down any further, but also on Wednesday, her father's attorney filed paperwork on his behalf, pointing the finger at Jody Montgomery, who was simply Britney's court appointed counsel. The attorney for Mr. Spears said, Mr. Spears is concerned about the management and care of his daughter. Based on her statements to the court, Mr. Spears is concerned that the petition 
petition to appoint Jody Montgomery, filed by Miss Spears' court-appointed counsel Samuel D. Ingham III, does not reflect her wishes. Miss Spears told the court on June 23rd that she is opposed to being under a conservatorship and revealed her ongoing disputes with Miss Montgomery about her medical treatment and other personal care issues. Now Montgomery, of course, vehemently denied Jamie's stance and fought back, saying that she is a tireless advocate for Brittany and for her well-being. All of that said, the only thing that is clear in, in all of this is that Brittany wants this conservatorship to end without any further evaluation. In her last plea to the judge, Brittany said, I just want my life back and it's been 13 years and it's enough. It's been a long time since I've owned my money and it's my wish and my dream for all of this to end without being tested. But we would love to hear your thoughts on this most recent denial from the judge. And while you do that, I'm going to check out some of your comments from the video titled, Woman Accidentally Drugs Herself After Smelling Flower. Art of Erica says, so anyone else worried about this becoming another challenge? Yeah, immediately as soon as I saw you guys posting those comments, I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, please don't. Please don't do that. Unknown Zero says, there are many flowers like that where I live and when I was little, my grandmother told me not to touch the flower or the leaves because it can drug you and send you to the hospital. That's a good grandma. Huvois says, hopefully it doesn't start a TikTok trend. Y'all know how peeps there can be. Uh, yeah, I, I really hope that someone on TikTok doesn't see that. And they're like, yeah, smell the flower challenger. No, cancel that. Cancel that for sure. Frico Tostado Cartoon says, in Puerto Rico, we call them Florida Campana or Bellflower. That sounds much better than Devil's Breath. Goodness. That sounds like a terrible hot sauce. Cats Over Brat says, It's 2.30 a.m. and I misread the title as woman accidentally sets herself on fire after smelling a flower. I have no idea why my brain went there. Oh man, I love the way the human brain works when you're in that state of just like being tired. It, it's all over the place. Either way, guys, that has been today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Johnny Rogers. And until next time, stay classy, YouTube, or at least try.